Um, yeah. I kind of been doing some drawing and forgetting to hit the record button. So, I actually record, drew this one the other day. And it took me a couple of hours while I was watching a couple of ice hockey games. And I forgot to record it. And I really, really like the look of this thing. It's kind of a sexy looking robot. And it's doable. And it actually has a live weapon axle rather than my usual dead ones. And I kind of like the live one now. I'm tempted to make the change on Avenger to make it the front axle live. And I've, um, so that's what I'm planning here is making this axle live. So I've already deleted the hub that was there and the bearings. And I have to make, I found some, um, the flanged bearings like I want to use for the rest of the robot that I can use 20 more flanged bearings at the top. And I was going to put those in. And, um, while I was looking around at my, um, at various parts trying to get figure out how I'm going to make this robot. I um, found taper lock um, hubs and bushes which I thought I could use on a um, live axle which means that I can um, um, use the taper lock on the um, sprocket because you can buy the taper lock sprockets. Where's the website? Yeah, taper lock sprockets. And then it's got this bush in here which clamps onto the axle. So that'll make removing the axle pretty quick. And I also found it on oh, music. Yeah, you can buy these weld weld on hubs which have the taper lock bush things in it as well so you can clamp on different weapons. Which I thought was good because those things they're not terribly expensive. That means I can make as many weapons as I want and just unbolt them from the axle. Make it cheaper and easier to build the robot. And I've already drawn up, so I've already drawn up the, um, modified the front sprocket so it's got the taper in the middle. I've drawn up the taper lock bushes and I've drawn up a weld on hub. And so I didn't really think I should record those because they're just common parts. I don't know if Philip would be upset that I didn't record them. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I plan on using them. I'm not entirely sure that they're going to withstand the impact or not. But then again, I wasn't sure if my, the pipe I was going to make, whether that was going to withstand the impact. Plus trying to bore out my um, sprockets to weld onto the pipe and then if I wanted four or five different axes I'll need to do it four or five different times but with these things here I don't need to do well I don't need to do any machine. Just makes it easier. Anyway, what I need to do is put a um the bearing in here onto the axle and change my axes so they Fit over this hub. I might have to make a few other modifications to make the um, taper hub fit in, make it a bit wider. Yeah, it probably needs to be a bit wider so you get your fingers in there a bit easier. Well, it just makes it a mean so I'm gonna spend a bit, a lot less money on this thing. Which would be nice. There's a few other things that I had in the car that I wanted to. But I, I was thinking about in the car ride home that I want to change, but I'll do this first. And do that in the next video. So, change this to a live axle with taper lock bushes. So, looking at that. So, we need to change this diameter here. Which isn't really hard. I probably should know the size of my bearings first. Actually, I already know the size of my bearings. I've already been looking on eBay to buy them. 
but I'll put in the bearings first. And then go to the content center, and go to the bearings, select the size, go to the table view, just look at the inside diameter in the table, or you don't have to look up trade sizes. There's this one here that I can buy as a flanged bearing. And it's actually seven mils wide. So it actually would fit into one layer. One piece of bisalloy pretty well. So it actually would be come together quite nicely. So we use this bearing which is a uh, a 61804. That's the trade name for it. That's a 20 mil bearing, 32 millimeters outside, 7 mil wide. Then I can buy a flanged version, which I can't remember how much they are, like two dollars each. I can get them on eBay. Yeah. I prefer to have tape of roller bearings rather than ball bearings because these ones may get damaged but for two dollars each I can buy a few spare I guess and if they break I can replace them so I'll give that a go 32 millimeters on the outside right. that's what we were originally looking for so if I change this 20 millimeters to 32 and we'll see what happens it gets bigger that's what happens it's not really much there to changes. Okay, that. Peter thinks about it. It's found in the Where's the air? Uh, how much you tell me? Might be that important then. I'll zoom in. Check that the other side has changed. The other side didn't change. Why didn't the other side change? Update. Oh yeah, now the other side's changed. It's just messing with me. Save it. Look at the welded chassis. Zoom in a bit. Update. There we go, that's bigger. Can we go back to the assembly. It's my axle. Sitting in there. See the axle is just a bolt. I haven't got the bolt head on me. Anyway, so we'll drop in these fellows. And I've actually also learnt the thickness of the flange, which was pretty nice. It's one and a half millimeters. Which means it's five and a half millimeters in contact with the chassis, which is perfect. So it fits into the six mil bisolo plate nicely. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I can't actually see the set. Oh, there you are. Hello. We are in the negative one point five apply. There's the bearing sitting in there. There we go. So now I've got a live axle instead of a dead one. I could probably put that chain closer to the side. I might make it a bit more. Oops, where'd you go? Can you come back? One second. What did I do? That sprocket's disappeared. Undo. Okay. No, that, it won't touch that for the moment. <laughs> Why is that gone? Actually, where was that sprocket in the tree? There we are. Ah, oh, there's an error. That's why it disappeared. We delete that. That's why the sprocket disappeared, because there was an error. And it's not actually constrained to the axle. It almost disappeared on me again. Oh, are yeah, you? What's happening? 
move that constraint to so it's there and there. It's not constrained to the X. And if I drag it there, that's yeah, just moved move snippets. Let me rotate it around. It does look like I need more space in the center. And let me fix that in a minute. I'll just put this taper lock bush in there. So that is inserted into there. Apply. There we go. Just got the taper lock bush on there. And this taper lock bush needs to be inserted into my axe, but I need to make sure that the dimension for the hole is big enough. So we'll go back to the skeleton. Go to the axe drawing. Here's my axe. I'll just turn these constraints off. There we go. And where's the dimension for the inside? Put the inside. That's in. Where's that inside? Well, that's inside because it's constrained on that. Where should I double that? Because that's the old pipe that was there. You know, I'm not using that pipe anymore, so I'll delete that. We have to make the inside of this 65. Because that hub has a 54 and a half mil. So if you make a 65, there's a bit of clearance. Beautiful. Finish sketch. Come back to the assembly. Update. That's bigger. So I can insert this onto this apply and there's our hub and we can insert the bush into the hub of the end. Now you put the thing. Edit that, go that way. Thank you. And we might as well make these things line up. They're supposed to go like that. There's another one. And it's supposed to go like that. So we'll just tell those to be. Oh, yeah, 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 the graphics is drawn up funny. <laughs> anyway, um, goes like that. <laughs> Why is that doing that? Yep. Yeah, that's just the taper lock, taper hub, and yeah, we've got a bit of an overlap on here, which I can't see because that's going all wonky. Oh, computer! Select other. Select the face of the hub. That one. And select the face of the sprocket. There we go. 7.1 millimeters overlap. So we need to make all this wider by 15 millimeters. It's either that will move the axe over further to one side. We actually want it centered. I think. Actually. No, we we'll shifted across to seven millimeters, eight millimeters. So I'll go back to here. There's my layout of the axes, axles. That one. So that's in the center line. So if I change that. To be half of that, the overall half of the overall, 
plus 8. No, not that was wrong. Half of the overall divided by 2 plus 8. So the axles are shifted across from the centre line. I'm just constrain that axle back onto the centre point. There we go, it's all black again. Finish. Why is that there? Because that's the centre line's on there. So, delete plans. Make the ends of the axles go in here. Put it back onto the centre. Finish sketch. The robot will shift across sideways. So now if I update this. There we go, all shifted sideways. So now there's room in here. Why oh, are you doing, computer? My mouse is double clicking on me. No, there we go. So the bit from here is still the same, but the axis shifted across. There we go, that worked out well. So that all fits. Now we have an easily replaceable weapons on a live axle. Beautiful. So I'll save this video and then tell you about my next big idea.